Hello children, your favorite YouTube channel Science Guru Sir Olok is back to you. And today I am here from class 9, Science that is uh, Tissue, Tissue Part 2. If you remember about the first video from this chapter that is Tissue Part 1, you will get that on that video I have discussed about the uh, plant tissue, all about the plant tissue. Now today in this part I will discuss about the animal tissues. So first of all, we'll understand about the tissue. We know that when a group of cells join together to perform a specific function, it is known as tissue. So again, when a group of cells join together to perform a specific function, it is known as tissue. Now we'll discuss about the classification of the animal tissue. On the basis of the function, we can classify the animal tissues into the following groups such as the epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue and the nervous tissue. First we will discuss about the epithelial tissue. The covering or protective tissues found in the animal body, they are called as epithelial tissue and this epithelial tissue covers most of the organs and cavities in our body. So what is epithelial tissue? The covering or protective tissues found in our body and most of these tissues uh, covers the cavities and the organs in our body. Example, the skin, the skin, the lining of the mouth, the lining of blood vessels, etc. are made up of this epithelial tissue. Now, structure of epithelial tissue, the cells found in the epithelial tissue are tightly attached with each other and they make a continuous sheet. So, therefore, we can say that there is no intercellular spaces found in the epithelial tissue because they are tightly attached with each other. Now, we can classify the different, uh, this epithelial tissue again into different types. These are on the basis of the location. Basis of the location, we can classify the epithelial tissue into different types. First one is the simple squamous epithelium. The cells of the simple squamous epithelium are extremely thin and flat and form a delicate lining. The esophagus, uh, the esophagus and the lining of the mouth are covered with this squamous epithelium. Second one is the cuboidal epithelium. This cuboidal epithelium forms the lining of kidney and ducts of the salivary glands and where it provides some mechanical support. This uh, cuboidal epithelium, they provide some mechanical support in our body. And the third one is the tall epithelium. The tall epithelial cells found uh, they are present in the inner lining of the intestine and they are responsible for secretion. Now we will discuss about the second type that is the connective tissue. The cells of this connective tissue are loosely attached. The cells of this connective tissues are loosely attached and embedded in an intercellular matrix. The matrix may be a jelly type or the fluid substance. There are different types of connective tissue as for example blood, bone, ligament and the cartilage. So we will discuss about the blood first. Blood. blood has a fluid matrix called as plasma and in this plasma WBC that is the white blood cell, RBC or the red blood cell and the platelets are embedded or suspended here. This plasma contains proteins, salts and hormones. And we know that function of the blood is very important in our body because this blood is responsible for transport of materials, uh, food materials or the nutrients from one part to another part in our body. Next one is the bone. Bone is another example of connective tissue. Bone is another example of connective tissue. It forms a framework to support our body and it is strong and there is no flexible tissue found in the bone. Remember here, there is no flexible tissue found in the bone because bone provides, bone uh, gives support to our body and it is very strong. Third one is the ligament. Two bones, when these two bones can be connected, two bones can be connected by another type of tissue which is known as the ligament and this tissue is very elastic. The ligaments contain very little matrix connect who, uh, and they connect bone with another bone. And the last one is the cartilage. Another type of connective tissue that is cartilage we can found in the animal body. Now we will discuss about the muscular tissue. Muscular tissue consists of elongated cells and also they are called as muscle fibers. And this tissue is responsible for movement in our body. This muscular tissue they are responsible for the movement in our body. 
muscle contain the special protein called the contractile protein and which is responsible for contraction and relaxation of the muscles and due to this our body can move we can move some muscles uh, by our conscious wills and these muscles are known as voluntary muscles these muscles are known as voluntary muscles the muscles which can we can move in our conscious wills these are known as voluntary muscles and these muscles are mostly attached with the bones and help in the body movement on the other hand the contraction and relaxation of the elementary canal blood vessels or the cardiac muscles are not in our control so these type of muscles are known as uh, involuntary muscles and this type of movement is also known as involuntary movement we cannot control the movement of these types of muscles these muscles are called as involuntary muscles now the last one is the nervous tissue here dear students we know that all the cells possess the ability to give response in case of stimuli any type of stimuli this is because of this nervous tissue only the brain spinal cord and nerve cells are uh, these are composed of this nervous tissue and the cells of this tissue are called as nerve cells or the neurons so this is all about the animal tissue again i am just uh, giving you the remainder the important the key points from this animal tissue the first one is the classification of the animal tissue on the basis of the location that is uh, epithelial tissue then classification of epithelial tissue again that is the simple squamous epithelium cuboidal epithelium and the tall epithelium then next one is the connective tissue connective tissue also we can classify it to different types then the blood blood bone ligament and the cartilage and next one is the muscular tissue muscular tissue again uh, muscles are classified into two types that is the voluntary muscles and the involuntary muscles and the next one is the nervous tissue this is all about the animal tissue hope you understand from this video and this is all about for today thank you